Hi friends, welcome to our channel 21 CFR part 11. Please subscribe our YouTube channel and hit the bell button to get more such updates. Today we are going to see the quick reference for computer system validation. The 21 CFR part 11 guidance scope and application says to all the companies that we recommend that you base your approach on a justified and documented risk assessment and a determination of the potential of the system to affect product quality, patient safety and record integrity. Now let us see some of the FDA warnings. The first warning says that the network module design limitations which only support up to 4 chromatographic acquisition system had up to 5 chromatographic systems connected. There is no validation showing this configuration to be acceptable. This FDA warning is related purely to the network and the configuration settings. Now the another FDA warning says that the software validation documentation failed to adequately define, update and control significant elements customized to configure the system for the specific needs of operation. In this warning, the definition, update and control of configuration settings are not required by the computer system validation SOP was spotted. There is a suggestion that you must define, update and control configuration setting for that specific system. Now here is the last FDA warning for your reference. The validation results do not meet the acceptance criteria and there was no documentation why the results were acceptable. The validation reports do not contain an evaluation of the validation data and the activities nor does it contain validation analysis and the conclusion. This FDA warning is purely related to the test results don't meet the acceptance criteria. Now let us see the 10 point quick reference for the computer system validation. The point number 1 says that form a project team. The representatives from the key areas like IT, QA, user groups, validation groups if available in your company, then regulatory affairs documentation purchasing must be included in the project team. This team should meet regularly. This team must make all the critical decisions and communicate to the wider user base. One member of this team must be defined as a validation lead. This team must have the management support. Now the point number 2 says that develop a validation project plan. Regulatory expectation says that the validation plan should define the activities, procedures and responsibilities for establishing the adequacy of the system. Validation project plan is basically derived from the company's validation master plan. The validation project plan specifies the strategy, approach, risk assessment, resources, responsibilities, activities and the deliverables of the validation efforts with the timetable. This can be the written in the table template or the flow text form. When to write the validation plan must be decided by the validation project plan team. Now the point number 3 says that conduct risk assessment. Assess the impact of the computer system on product quality, patient safety and data integrity. List all the systems and records that are in question. Look at the impact on the medicinal product quality. Allocate records to risk categories high, medium or low risk. Now the criteria to ask here is what happens if the e-records are wrong? 
What happens if the data are not available? Take actions for high, medium and low risk systems. For example, the equipment qualification. Here the frequency of the revalidation must be decided. Then the computer system validation and the system security must be included while conducting the risk assessment. Now talking about the fourth point, document user requirements. The regulatory expectation says that the requirement specification should describe the required functions of the computerized system and it must be based on the documented risk assessment and GMP impact that is as per Annexure 11. The user requirements should be traceable throughout the life cycle. If we talk about the contents, it must have justifications for the system, its intended application, example the electronic document management, intended environment that is the computer and network operating system etc. The best example is laboratory, manufacturing and offices. The contents must decide the process overview, detailed user requirement, the signature and the approval. Now who shall be the contributors of this user requirement? The contributors must be all departments that are affected by the system. Now the point number 5 says that assess the supplier. The purpose of this is determine the adequacy of supplier's quality system. The regulatory expectation EU GMP Annex 11 says that the regulated user should take all reasonable steps to ensure that the system has been developed in accordance with an appropriate quality management system. The supplier should be assessed accordingly. The additional benefit of assessing the supplier is that it can reduce in-house testing through tests done by the supplier. Now the point number 6 says that the installation qualification. First of all, collect suppliers environmental condition, operating and working instructions and the maintenance requirement. Now compare systems as received with the purchase order. Installation of the system according to vendor specifications must be done. For example, servers, clients, licenses, installation protocol etc. Then install the interfaces, example the email system with impact analysis. Now design the overview with system drawings, example the data flow. Now the complete testing for the successful installation must be done. Check the documentation for accuracy and completeness. Document all the component with assets and serial numbers. It must be noted that the installation qualification was started by the vendor but it always must be finished by the IT department. Now the point number 7 says about the operational qualification. Here you have to identify critical functions of the computer system as defined in the functional and user requirement specification. You must develop test cases for the functions and define the acceptance criteria. You must perform these tests. After performance of the test, evaluate the results and compare with the acceptance criteria. Document the results. Assistance from vendor for OQ services, hardware and software can be taken. You may be having a question in mind that what needs to be test. The functions that can be impacted by the user's environment, for example, the user configuration, user customization, hardware configuration and the cabling, for example, the communication between computer and the equipment, all must be tested. Please note that the real critical system functions must be tested thoroughly. Now the point number 8 says about the ongoing performance qualification that is PQ. The purpose of PQ is to ensure smooth application specific operation and suitable performance of the complete system through ongoing operation. Here the regular system performance test must be made. 
system suitability testing must be done for the con quality control system. Regularly do the security checks. Regularly maintain the desk that is removing the temporary files. Environmental monitoring testing must be done. All the changes must be in the controlled form. The ongoing system training to the employees must be provided. Regularly the data backup must be done. The revalidation that is OQ must be done regularly and after the changes. The point number 9 says about the retrospective qualification of the equipments and validation of the computer system. Here the FDA requirements and the enforcement must be very well updated to the users. The approaches for the existing system versus the new system validation must be made. Documenting the system use is very very important. Leveraging the past experience is also must because this will tell you what and how much to test. Maintaining the validated state of the system will come only by the retrospective qualification of the equipment and the validation of the computer systems. Now the last but not the least, the point number 10 which says about writing the validation report. This should include the brief description of the each major project activity which is used to review all preceding validation activities and indicates the status of the system prior to the implementation into a production environment. Deviations from the project plan should be documented and risk assessment should be performed. Approver of the validation report prerequisite for the release must be made. All the risk assessment for the deviations must be made while writing the validation report. So friends, that was a very quick 10 reference point for your computer system validation. I hope you must have liked it. We have our presence in Facebook, YouTube. We also have our presence in LinkedIn. Please follow us. Have a nice day and bye-bye.